Number 30, which of the following compounds precipitates from a solution that has the concentrations indicated? And let's see appendix J for the KSB values. So in this case, we have to find out if we're going to have a precipitate from PBI2 depending on what the concentrations are. They told us that the lead 2 plus concentration is 0 0.003 molarity, and the I minus is 1.3 times 10 to the negative third molarity. I did go in the back of the textbook to find out what the KSP value is for PBI2, which is 1.4 times 10 to the negative eighth. Now, in order to find out if we're going to have a precipitate at the end, and remember, precipitate just means like leftover solid. An easy way to think of this is for all you coffee or tea lovers that love to put sugar in their coffee or tea, right? You put a little bit of sugar and no solid is going to be at the bottom, right? Which means that you could add more salt, more sugar, right? But if you add a lot of sugar, some of it's not going to dissolve. That's a precipitate. That all the remnants at the bottom, the sugar that's not dissolving in the coffee or the tea, that's a precipitate. So we just have to find out, is there going to be that solid, like, you know, in the solution? Well, all we have to do is we just have to find out the QSP, right? This is kind of like... Uh, Think back to chapter 13 when we did reaction quotients. A Q value is just like a, a K value, but at any point in time in the reaction. So we're just going to compare that value to the known KSP value and then take into consideration is a precipitate going to form or not? We need a balanced equation. So PB I2, that's a solid. This comes to equilibrium, so double arrow. They told us the two ions are ready, so thank you very much for that. It's an ion, so that's aqueous. And then this is also an ion, I minus, so that's aqueous. I just need to see if I need to balance the equation, and I do. There's two iodines, so I have to put a two here. And now I'm just going to put this over to the side. I'm going to now just say how much they gave me. So for the PB2+, plus, they told me that I had 0 0.003 molarity. And for the I minus, I have 1.3 times 10 to the negative third. Don't be tempted to times it by two because I have two in the balanced equation. This is all the iodine that you got. So I have to keep it that way. 1.3 times 10 to the negative third molarity. Okay, let's take that balanced equation and write the QSP. So we got QSP equals concentration of the two products, just like it would be a KSP. So PB2 plus times I minus raised to the coefficients, right? There were two in front of the I. So I have to take that I and square it. You can, you know, raise this to the first because there's one PB, but you don't have to, right? And I'm going to say, okay, PB was 0 0.003. And the I was 1.3 times 10 to the negative third. So let's plug this in. QSP equals, we got 0 0.003 times 1.3 times 10 to the negative third, and that's squared. I'm going to plug this all into the calculator in one shot. Let's see if you get the same answer as me. So we get 1.3 times 10 to the negative third squared, and then times up by 0 0.003. I get five, I mean, 5.1 if we're doing two sig figs, right? Okay. So now I'm just going to take you know this into consideration. We're going to say, okay, I have a QSP of 5.1 times 10 to the negative ninth. And I have a KSP, which we had to find in the back of the textbook, of 1.4 times 10 to the negative eighth. Now, normally, or in this case, right, our exponents are different. Once the exponents are different, don't even worry about looking at the numbers. Just look at the exponents. Whichever one is greater, that's the greater number. So here, negative 9 versus negative 8. A negative 8 is greater than a negative 9, right? Negative 9, there's less, you know, you're going all the way to the, the left end of the spectrum versus a negative 8. So in this case, KSP is greater than QSP.
right? So either the QSB is less than the KSB or the KSB is greater than the QSB. But the idea is that you did not exceed your solubility product. And since we're less than, we're unsaturated. No precipitate would form, which means that you could still add more of your, you know, your salt and still maybe not see you know, precipitation until you reached above that KSB value. So the answer here is no precipitate. All right. Okay. What'd you think? I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments, subscribe to the channel. I hope you all are doing well out there. Good luck on your finals and your tests or your quizzes, wherever you are in your stage of chem. And I will be talking to you later. Okay, bye-bye.